am going to be going over connectors for a Valley Judge Dread that we streamed last week. There was an issue with the launch button um, shooting the ball and it would work sometimes and then it wouldn't. Um, before the stream I actually changed out the micro switch on that button which seemed to help a little bit but um, it still was sort of intermittent. So now I'm going to go through the steps to change a connector and I'm going to show you how we find which one it is and then how to replace it. Since we're talking about switches, really the first thing to do is to check out the manual for the switch matrix. Um, you can also look at the wire colors um, associated with that switch in question, but it really helps to get a good picture by looking at the switch matrix. And so what we're talking about here is really the, the right fire button which is actually switch 12 and looking at the wire colors on the switch I can see that I have white with a red stripe and then I have green with a brown stripe and in the switch matrix it's showing me that this is connector J207 pin 1 and the white with red stripe is J209 pin 2 I know that these switch connectors are on the MPU board for the game. So I'm going to go there and I'm going to look for uh, J207 pin 1, J209 pin 2. Inside the back box of WPC games, uh, your MPU uh, is on the far left and your switches, all your connectors for your switches are on the very far bottom left. So let me zoom in here and we'll take a closer look at the connection. So in here we're looking at J207 pin 1 for a green and brown color wire and then J209 pin 2 or a red a white with red stripe color wire so that would be 209 is here and this is pin 2 and then 207 is here and it'd be pin 1 so you can see on on the screen printing of the board the little one is pin 1 and then the far left is pin 9, so these are 9 pin connectors and pin 1 is the green with brown. One problem with these t style connectors, these are actually called IDC connectors, which are insulation displacement connector and these are really popular during this time because it was qu really quick to put the wires in place but the problem is um, if you ever have a bad um, connection on one of your wires it's it's not very easy to to fix it um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert these I have to convert all I can't just replace the one um, I need to replace the entire connector housing and crimp on terminals for each one of the wires in order to fix the one wire. So what I'm going to do is convert it over to uh, Molex um, wafer style connectors and these happen to be a KK style crimp connection which is a 0.1 inch or 2.54 millimeter crimp terminal. A Molex style wafer connector looks a little different in that it has slots that you can slide these these pins into. The crimp connection is actually quite small and this will crimp onto each of the individual wires that will slide into the, the new connector. I don't actually have a 9 pin connector in my inventory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one by taking a larger connector 
I'm going to snip the connection or the um, just cut it to length of what I need. So you just take some flush cut snips and just snip around and I can make a connector to whatever size it needs to be. So once that's snipped, just trim the ends. There we go. It doesn't look quite as pretty, but it'll work and I can plug it into its spot. So it'll actually go down here, but just to show it fits. One thing of note when you go to do replace a connector is to take note of the, the key for it. And in this case, um, you can see there's a little triangle printed on the board. What that indicates is the key for the connector. And basically all that is is a plug on the, ins, um, on the end of the connector, making it so you can't inadvertently plug it into another spot in the game. Um, so in this case, actually this key is the uh, same, but if I was to go and put it over here, um, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't go in. Since these connectors have a cap on the back of it, sometimes um, they don't, and you can just pull these connectors off. Um, but since this doesn't, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to snip the individual wires off of the connector, and then I'm going to strip a little end off of it. You don't need much, maybe like a, an eighth of an inch. Um, then what I do is I take my ratchet crimpers and I put the crimp terminal in the correct size slot and then insert the wire into that space and then what I try to do is I look for the wire on the other side and um, I'll show you in a second but when you do you crimp it down and you see how it it crimps both the insulated jacket and the uh, the stripped end of the wire so on this on this connector see how there's two fins to the connector. The outer larger fin on the end that crimps on to the insulated jacket of the wire. The inner one crimps on to the bare wire and that's how the connection works. So that ends up being basically in the dies of this crimp tool and there's a, a higher and lower crimp spot so it pinches the casing less than than the wire itself so you have to insert your connector in the proper direction in order to get it to crimp in that way now what I like to do as I go along is so again paying attention to the key which is pin 8 um, I'm just gonna go and put these into the connector you see these slots on the one side of the, the connector? Well, if you look at the pin, it's got this little raised tab on the back of it, and that matches up with the slot. So when you push it in to its position, it's going to slide and it's going to snap in. And you can hear an audible snap. And then when you tug on it, it's not going to come back out. But if you make a mistake or if you ever need to get these pins out of the connector, you can take a little dental tool and you can push down on that tab and you just give it a little push and it'll bend that tab down.
and then you can pull it back out. Sometimes if you don't bend it too much, you can take your fingers and bend that tab back up and then it's good to use again and then you can just take it and put it back in the slot and it snaps back in now I'm gonna go through and do all the rest of these wires and crimp them on and uh, I'll show you when it's all said and done. All right, now the last part is the key. Um, you see how I have one space that I left open for the marking on the board. And um, you can buy, there's plastic keys that you can buy. Um, sometimes you can pull the, the piece out of the old one and use it. Um, but you could also, in a pinch, you can use a, um, this is just a toothpick, you can shove it in the end and break it off. So I'll just push it in, and then you just break it off flush, there you go, homemade key. I can plug it in. And then that connector is done.
there we go both connectors are done hopefully you found this helpful thanks for watching